breaking news right now on CBS 2 News at 6 p.m. Look oh. along! <laughs> Breaking news now, actor and comedian Bob Saget has We've also died. just learned that beloved comedian and actor Bob Saget has died at the age of 65. Breaking news just into the CNN newsroom, actor and comedian Bob Saget has died at the age of 65. It's always a shock when anyone dies and so it was with the tragic death of Bob Saget. When I heard of his passing, I came across a video that showed another side to this incredibly confident and funny man. It really touched me as I listened to him soberly talk about the serious issues of life and death. It was a podcast with a fellow Full House actor talking about the stress of modern life, the tragedy of death, and even a very brief mention of Jesus. It surprised me because Bob was Jewish, but his respect for the person of Jesus was surprisingly evident. I'm not going to comment on any of this. I'll let it do the talking for you. I don't even, I say praying more than I ever did, but the world's like nuts. So does it make you, it is, it, it's it, crazy. It's, it's, and I don't even want to talk about it because we're exhausted talking about it, right? I'm exhausted from it. When you would talk to Robin Williams, we know too many dead people is the problem. And Robin, <laughs> it's so weird because the punch ups on the script were our friend Chris Thompson's, who we lost last year. Uh, really tragic and sad that he's gone. The world is so angry in so many ways I'm hoping that we get through this yeah. time where they're not angry where you get to go entertain people and I was before before COVID happened I was performing and I had some people start beating each other up in the audience because people were already at each other the the pressure cooker was already happening you know yeah two three years ago I it's, I felt it say, you, know. you know my sister Sharon uh a week before she died always said um and she loved you. She thought you were so funny. I loved my her sister too. Sharon. My sister Sharon was one of the funniest people I've ever known. And um, she would say to me the week before she passed away, she said, Dave, mom is just coming in here with her rosary and dad's throwing holy water on me. They're nuts. She goes, can you just make jokes about me after I'm dead? It well, it's hard to understand. Yeah. But for us, we always, we always did that because... It just, it's our way of dealing with pain. It's how my dad dealt with it. It's, I mean, I, you know, at the, when you're Jewish, you have a shiva. When you're not, you can have a wake or many other ceremonies. Well, I spent a lot of time in funeral parlors, right? So when my mom passed a few years ago, my mom, Dolly. So I walk in first before my kids who wanted to see her. And I wish, sometimes I wish they hadn't because she's the matriarch of the family. And um, and the same thing happened for my nephew and um, and my ex-wife, Sherry. And, I mean, it was, you know, it's a big monumental thing when you lose someone like that. But then I click into this overdrive of weirdness because it's my defense and it protects me. And it also allows me to go, okay, because she, my mom, when you and Stamos, I'm saying that to make people understand quicker but when you and john came to her hospital room when she was in hospice john and i walked in and your mom was there she had her hands like this folded and you were there and she did and have she a halo a around her she really did it was in it the picture it was amazing it was real well, she had this glowing expression on her face and i don't know if she was just that happy that me and john were coming to see she her. she was and, and she was totally like, at peace dave but she was never like that her whole life she had such a hard life and and, you, and I stood back and I go, my gosh, Dolly, you look like an angel. And she goes, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you're special, Bobby. My, I would hear that a lot. I was like, one time she said to me, um, Bobby, you're so amazing. You can do anything. I said, Mom, please, I'm not Jesus. She went, no, you're better than Jesus. <laughs> I went, oh, Mom, no. No, I'll tell people that this isn't going to be uh, Danny and Joey. <laughs> this is Bob and Dave being very candid and honest with each other. And dealing with death. Because I was in a plane with you once, and uh, the landing gear wouldn't go down. And, and uh, we got a problem with the uh, landing gear. So, hey, Bob, would you mind reaching back there and turning that crank? And I'm like, what? What is this? The wrong? Your... It's the wrong brothers. So I cranked yeah. the wheels down, and I was thinking, "You're gonna die, Bob. You're dead. We're gonna die." 
And you landed it perfectly. And caused pain and suffering to himself to save us from some... He's almighty and all-powerful and he could just do it. Like he's stronger than Thanos, he could snap. Do you think there's an afterlife? No. I don't. It's a, we're a cosmic accident and when we're done, we're done. So what caused the accident? The life thing, if you look at the odds, it's like a one in a million, but it only had to happen once, and then you just, it builds from there. He was saying the life thing happened by accident. It's called in modern science the Goldilocks principle. The porridge was cold, the porridge was hot, but one porridge was just right. Life exists because we were lucky. The porridge was just right. Uh, the afterlife, now that I'm in my 80s, I believe that we just die. And I saw an interview with Larry King, and I can't remember, the guy that created all the puppets. Jim Henson. Yeah, Jim Henson, he agreed. He said that they both believe that there's no heaven, that you just, they don't really know what happens. But You know, Jim Henson died young. It was a shock to everybody, yeah. I'm sure to himself. And then there was the death of Jim Henson. It came as a big surprise yesterday. He had a bacterial infection that apparently went untreated and eventually took his life yesterday morning. And now he knows there's an afterlife. And same with Larry King. Larry King was tormented by the fear of death. He kept talking about it all the time as he got older. Do you fear, do you fear leaving the planet? Oh no, oh I'm, Come on. I look forward. I fear it. Did you hear what Larry King said? He says, come on, I fear it. Oh, I'm, come on, I look forward. I fear it. Of course she fears death. Everybody fears death. The Bible says that. Hebrews chapter 2 says, we are haunted by the fear of death all our lifetime. One of my friends actually shared the gospel with Larry King. He went through the commandments with him, into grace, preached the cross, so Larry King was not left without light. Oh, I don't. I'm so curious. We know, we all know everything about everything. My mother taught me this. We know the answers to everything or we can find out the answers. But the one thing we can't find out is what happens that moment after. You can, you can, you can think, you know. You can or you think, can, you know. You can have you can... faith. What a crying shame her mother didn't open up the Bible and share its truths with her because the scriptures tell us exactly why we die. It says, appointed a man wants to die and after this the judgment. We have to face God on judgment day and it's not a matter of blind faith. If I believe that candle's hot I have an intellectual belief but if I put my finger in its flame the second my flesh burns I stop believing I now know it's hot. I don't believe it's hot. I've moved out of the realm of belief into the realm of experience and that's what you can have if you obey the gospel. You move out of the realm of belief into the realm of experience. You come to know the Lord. The Bible says this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So if death is a mystery to you, it's willful ignorance. Take the time to search the scriptures and see what the Bible actually says. And you don't want to leave yourself without hope. Do you ever read the Bible? No, I don't. Do you know it promises everlasting life? It tells you how to get it? It's, it's man's instruction book. At one point the universe was tiny, tiny, tiny. Hang on, where did that come from? And then it blew up. Where did the tiny, tiny, tiny come from? Well, the same way it's going to go tiny again. Yeah, but where did it come from? What was the initial cause? Oh, it doesn't matter. Of course it does. It does to me. I'm a thinking person. Why does it... No, anything that happened prior to the Big Bang has no effect on anything after the Big Bang, so there's no purpose in worrying about it. So the Big Bang is still credible? I've heard that it's been discredited. It, because it's not a bang. It, everything was tiny, tiny, and then it, now it's expanding, and when it hits a certain expansion, I believe it's going to start shrinking back down again. That sounds like Disney to me, like a little fairy, and everything happened. Is that what you think? Sure. Are you an atheist? Yes. Never be intimidated when someone says, I'm an atheist. You're not talking to someone who's intellectual. You're talking to someone whom the Bible says is a fool. Someone who believes the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything. Now watch this guy backslide the moment I confront him with that truth. So you believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything? That's utterly impossible. No, I believe that was something at the beginning. The Bible is God's instruction book. It tells you how to find everlasting life. What do you think it says? I have no idea. Well, shouldn't you find out? Shouldn't you look into it? It's the world's biggest selling book of all time. Yeah, well, that's your belief. You want to make up a fairy tale that there's some afterlife or some big cosmic 
person watching over you, if that makes you feel better, good for you. But there's no proof, there's no reason to believe it, and nah. Could it be, Matt, that you don't like the thought of God because he speaks of morality and moral responsibility and says certain things are right and certain things are wrong? Could it be that? Could it be that you like your pornography and fornication and any thought of God makes you think, man, I'm responsible to him? Would that be right? No. Um, I believe that if you need God to be a moral person, you're not a moral person to begin with. I'm a moral person. I act in moral ways, and I don't need some cosmic parent who's going to spank me if I do something bad. If the only reason you're not out raping and murdering is because God told you not to, you're a person. So you're a moral person? Yep. By what standard? Uh, the human standard. It evolves over time. It's We live in a community. Okay, so I'm going to give you a standard to judge yourself by. Can you be honest? Let's go. Is this, like, how much longer we got here? Guilty sinners don't mind talking about apologetics, but the moment you move from the intellect to the conscience, like Adam, they'll want to run and hide. Yeah, we'll like be real. I'll be, I'll be really quick. Okay. How many lies have you told in your life? This is the Ten Commandments we're looking at. I don't know. Quite a few. For a while there, yeah. I, uh, I made a point several years ago of not lying anymore. So I, I quit lying years ago. Have you ever stolen something? Nope. Is that one of those lies? I, I, have, I don't remember having ever stolen something. How's you've, that? You've forgotten what you stole? Because I don't steal, so I probably didn't. You probably didn't? You weren't watching closely? You remember every second of your life? for? Yeah, sure I do. I remember when I stole. It stays in the conscience. You ever heard a song from many years ago and it brings back instant memories or even a smell can do the same thing? Everything is recorded on the hard drive of the memory banks. We may not recall a certain incident that we did, but God will certainly recall it on Judgment Day. Oh, well then I didn't steal because it's not in my conscience, so okay. clearly I didn't steal. <laughs> Third question. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Sure. Okay. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? Yeah, she's not a nice person. Okay, you've just broken the fifth commandment, honor your father and mother. Yeah, but if your father... Like, they don't get to be honored just because... <laughs> um, Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Oh, yeah. All the time. You had sex before marriage? Loads of times. Okay. And after marriage. Okay, that's adultery. So, here's a quick summation. I uh, appreciate your honesty, Matt. You've just told me you're a lying, thieving because I can't believe you've never stolen something, fornicating, blasphemous, adulterate heart, and you've got to face God on Judgment Day whether you believe in him or not. If he judges you by the Ten Commandments, and I've said if, yeah. do you think you'll be innocent or guilty? No, if he judges me by that set of rules, I'm definitely guilty. Heaven or hell? I mean, obviously, if I'm guilty and it's all real and I'm wrong, then hell. Like, if I'm wrong, I know where I'm going, and that's fine, because I'm not wrong. Doesn't concern you? Not at all. Matt, it horrifies me, the thought of death seizing upon you and you being justly damned in hell. That horrifies me. You don't realize this, but I love you, I care about you. And the thought of you going to hell takes my breath away. What did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? But yeah, I know, he sacrificed his kid. That's like, that's like taking all the debt in the world, putting it on one guy, and then killing him, and now no one else has any debt. It's a way to do things. If I had your theology, I'd be an atheist. That is so erroneous. God became a human being, suffered and died for the sins of the world. We broke God's law. Jesus paid the fine. That means God can dismiss your case. He can forgive your sins and let you live forever. Or if he was almighty and all powerful, he could just make it all rainbows, butterflies. Like, if he could do it, why isn't he? Why are we living? Why did he have to sacrifice himself and cause pain and suffering to himself to save us from some He's almighty and all-powerful, and he could just do it. Like, he's stronger than Thanos. He could snap. Because he's just and holy, and he's going to make sure justice is done. Okay. Dan, I want you to repent and trust Christ so you can have uh, everlasting life. I want you to think about what we talked about. Will you at least think about it when you leave? The same way I'll think about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, man. They're fun little stories. <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks for talking to me. Cheers. I appreciate it. Yeah, have a nice day. It was yeah, fun. Hang on, I want to give you something. Okay. Is it a um, Bible? Because I don't want a Bible. No, no, no. Okay. Um... It's a couple of in and out cards for lunch. Oh, thank you. Well, that's a fact. It's the world's biggest selling book of all time, and it's the most hated book in the world, and the most loved. Do you know why it's hated? Uh, I gotta go.
Bye. Well, nice to talk to you, Dolores. She's walking away. My heart was breaking even before I got to the gospel. I so wanted to share with her that God offers everlasting life, freedom from the fear and power of death. But she's walking off. But watch what happens. Can I give you a couple of in and out cards? Okay. <laughs> that turns you back, doesn't it? So, if in and out can get you to turn around, God's promise of everlasting life should do the same for you, okay? Is this in and out burger? Yes. Oh. And can I get, let me give you one of these cards too, Dolores, and I want to give you another gift. Oh. It's a book that I wrote. Oh. Can I give it to you? Sure. I'm an author, I write books. I love Oops. to read. You love to read? Well, this, this will really, uh, really help you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. What is your name again? My, my name is Ray. It's on the back of the book. Are we still on? Yes, we're still on. Okay, thank you, Ray, for the book. I'll read it. You may remember that we're giving away one million copies of the Million Dollar Gospel of John. If you're interested, you can get 200 copies, free of charge, and free shipping. Here's a quick video for those of you who want to be involved. We had big problems finding 250,000 plastic door hanger bags for our last giveaway, so we knew that there was no way we were going to find a distributor who could supply one million. So you've got a choice. You can either purchase your own 4 inch by 7 inch Ziploc bags, or you can toss them without the protection of a plastic bag. You may have a concern that the publication will be damaged without the plastic bag, so I did a little testing. I tossed one Gospel of John onto a rough driveway ten times. And as you can see, there was very little damage, so one toss should be fine. You may have a concern about wet or snowy weather, so I did some more testing in rain and snow and whatever to show you that this booklet is as tough as nails. And don't forget how quick and easy it is to toss these from your car. It's so much more effective than going out and finding people. There's no confrontation, it gets right into people's homes, and you can distribute about a hundred in less than ten minutes. And who's not going to pick this up? For further details of how and when you can be involved, make sure you subscribe to the Living Waters newsletter. That's where we'll be giving specifics. And you can do that at livingwaters.com.